Yeah, hello everyone. Welcome to my session, Apps, Apps, Apps and More Apps. Meet the very best open source apps from OpenNTF. My name is Niklas Heitloff. I work for IBM. I work in the XPages development team in the um, United States. And I've done that now for 12 or 13 years um, in different roles, obviously, but mostly related in some way to application development. And in my current role, I work on community. Um, I'm the technical chair for OpenNTF. I'm also a director in the board of directors of OpenNTF. And I've also um, developed myself a couple of open source projects that I put on OpenNTF, like the mobile controls, the social enabler, and most recently, the integration of XPages and IBM Connections. So today, um, what I want to do in this session is to give you a lot of demonstrations. I really want to show you all the different types of applications and controls, tools, snippets, etc., all the things that we have on OpenNTF so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel when you um, want to build your own applications. Um, so I have only like a handful of slides or so, and then I jump right into demo mode, and my goal is here to show you both the website or the different websites of OpenNTF, the different features, capabilities, and then demonstrate 22 different OpenNTF projects. So um, don't have much time here. Um, so that's why I won't spend much time on the, um, on the slides. <clears throat> Just to give you a really quick um, overview or introduction to OpenNTF, if there's someone left who doesn't know OpenNTF yet. Um, OpenNTF is the open source site for everything related to IBM collaboration solutions. The focus um, has been and still is um, on Node's Domino applications, um, but there's also other types of applications like Symfony samples, same time samples, some Domino Quicker samples, and we would like to also um, add some more samples um, for IBM Connections and um, other, um, some other of our products. Um, now, what we have done um, over the last years is to really change OpenNTF in a couple of different ways. So OpenNTF was established 10 years ago, um, but three or, four years, um, three or four years ago, we kind of reinvented OpenNTF and made it more professional. We converted um, you know, OpenNTF as it um, used to be into a non-profit organization. And OpenNTF is now um, a, a group of 29 member companies. And IBM is one of those, um, but obviously not the only one. As far as governance goes, we have a board of directors um, with nine people, I actually I think 11 or 12 people in there, um, who are really responsible for the technical direction and strategy of OpenNTF. And the other big thing that we changed three years ago was to create a new IP model, um, a model um, that allows bigger companies and actually everyone to consume the code from OpenNTF because honestly, before that, you know, there wasn't really any IP clearance going on, any intellectual property um, clearance going on. Um, so right now we have an IP manager who actually clears these releases, who makes sure that the licenses can be used, that the project um, owners want to use, make sure that the different licenses in a project are compliant, make sure that there are no copyright violations, etc., so that you as a consumer can actually um, use that code without having to worry about these, these, all these legal issues. Um, so that, that's OpenNTF in a nutshell, in terms of organization and, and you know, how we handle intellectual property. Now, um, this slide here has a couple of numbers, and I won't go um, through all of these numbers, just to highlight a couple of ones. Um, you know, the most important number, a number that I'm really proud of, is the number of downloads. You know, when we started um, at the end of 2008, we had 1,000, 100,000 downloads um, per year, which was already a good number. Um, but as you can see, over the last three years, we increased that by 80%. And actually, even this year again, we are on track to, you know, increase that. And, and I hope that we can get the 200,000 downloads at the end of this year. Um, and that number, and the reason why I'm so proud of that number is because it really shows that people use OpenNTF. You know, I mean, there's always this problem with community, and this is not specific to OpenNTF, XPages, or IBM, but in any community, you have like 99% of all people who are rather passive, who are the consumers, and that's good too, to have these many people. Um, but there's very few people who actually contribute, right? But by the number of downloads, we actually see that there are a lot of people who are using this code. So that's, that's why I think that number is maybe the most impressive number. And the only other number, 
I want to point out here is the first one, 360 new open source releases last year, which really means one new release every day. You know, and, and this is really impressive. This is, this is a huge growth um, compared to the years before that. And um, just to give you some ideas, I think like a third, maybe a fourth of these um, projects are from IBM. The rest is community, you know, non-IBMers who work on this in their spare time or who take that work, um, you know, take the code that they develop during the work time and contribute it so that other people can use it as well. So that's, that's an, uh, another really great number. So why did we get um, you know, these many contributions? Well, I think we did a couple of things right. Um, one of the things um, you know, are certainly the contests. So um, we just last, and as of last week, we finished and announced the winners of the last, of the third contest. But last year we had already done two contests, um, the first and second half of that year. And what we are asking in these contests are different things. In the first contest, we asked simply for all types of reusable controls, code that you can reuse in your own custom apps. You know, we did that so that we would get a bigger amount of controls um, and so that we could create some buzz and make people aware of the contest. Now, in the second contest, we asked you know, for more specific things. We asked for mobile applications or social applications. Um, we didn't get as many entries, but still a good number. And then in this third contest, we even asked for more. We asked for full applications. And as you can see, we got a great number of entries here, 30 entries, and they are very powerful, high-quality, sophisticated applications among these submissions. So I encourage you to take a look and, and see how you can leverage that. And just the last sentence here to the contest, or actually two points. One is, um, a really good number here is the number of first-time contributors. Like in the last one, we got 18 new people who contributed the first time. Now, that, doesn't, might, that might not sound too high when you're here the first time, but back to what I said earlier with the 99% of people who are the consumers, that number is a really good number. You know, 18 new actual doers, people of the 1%. And then the last point I wanted to say about contests is that I would love to have another contest later this year. Um, but that's really all I can say at this point. Uh, we are working to find sponsors, and we are working to define the, the goals this time, etc. cetera. Um, but this is certainly our goal. Um, and, and just to give you an idea for what you can win, why you should um, you know, participate, in the last contest, we had prizes in a total of $4,800 that the four winners could win. So that's, that's a good amount of money. I mean, it's, you, know, you wouldn't start implementing an application just for that contest to get you know, these $1,600 for the winner. But if you happen to have a good application and you only need to do some fine tuning and then put it on OpenNTF, this is a great opportunity. <clears throat> okay, so now actually I go in demo mode. Um, and I want to show you a couple of things. First of all, before I show the actual projects, I want to show a couple of yeah, services or features that we have. Um, so there is a website, X Pages Info, and can I just ask quickly, how many of you know that website? Okay, okay. not too many yet, surprisingly. Um, this, this is a website that we created like one and a half years ago, I guess, um, and it's really the homepage, the entry point for X Pages developers. Um, and there's a couple of different things. So what I've currently opened here is this tab contests. And I apologize for you know, the real estate, here, for the, for the re re resolution. It's really hard to see something. But um, you know, this, this tab contains the list of all these contributions for the three contests. And it's a long, 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 long list. And the nice thing is for all of these things, you have a link with screenshots as well as videos. And I, I think especially the videos really help to understand what these things do. And they are not long videos, just you know, a couple of seconds, a minute. Um, so that you get an idea what these things do without having to, you know, download them, install them, try them, read the documentation, and so forth. So we are trying, we are continuously trying to make it easier for people to actually consume the projects on OpenNTF. So that's one of these tabs. But again, I, I just want to go through all of these real quick. Um, the first one, the home page, and uh, it's very slow here, the network right now. Um, <coughs> So the, the home page is, is really the, the most visited page um, because, okay, there it is, because it contains a list of daily news. And, and this is a list of news from external sources, from 
personal blogs from our wiki, from the forum, from Stack Overflow, from Slideware, important tweets. So all the things that are happening around X pages are consolidated here or federated here. But I, I should correct, I need to correct myself, not all of the things, but only really the high quality ones. Um, <clears throat> because we, we don't want to create or put in too much noise here. We want to make it easy again for people to consume. And it's really hard to keep up with all the news about X pages, I have to say, because per day we have like four or five entries on average. This is a huge amount. You know, since we created this um, site, we had like uh, more than 1,500 entries here. So it's, um, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in the X pages community. There are so many bloggers. Um, there's, you know, questions and answers on Stack Overflow, forum, wiki. Um, or when I go through these other tabs, um, for example, videos, um, you can see there's a whole bunch of um, free videos available. There's a whole series called Notes and Nine done by David Leedy, one of the people in this community. And, and he created all these free um, video or training videos. And uh, it, it just takes forever right now, but uh, oh, here it is. So you have jumpstart videos, and then you have these learning videos. You have videos about open NTF projects categorized by user type, beginners, advanced, typical, and so forth. And I, I don't know, I, I guess 15 or 20 hours of videos is this just here available for free. And this is a really good way to learn at least capabilities um, to, to understand what you can do and, and then you know, also, at least on a high level, how you can do things. So then the other thing um, you know, XPages developers really should know is here Stack Overflow. Now, Stack Overflow is um, a well-established um, external community for questions and answers. Um, and this is, of course, not specific for X pages. Stack Overflow has been around for a couple of years. I don't know, maybe a decade. I don't know for sure. But uh, there's many, many questions and answers, and people are really keen on answering questions there. And we created this new X pages category or tag on Stack Overflow. And what you see here um, on, on this tab is a list of the most recent questions. Now what I can do in here is I can um, open them or I can go directly to, to Stack Overflow. And I just wanna uh, show you quickly an example here. Um, there's the question at the top and then there's the different possible answers. And all of these questions and answers have ratings. You know, you can rate them up and down here. Um, and that really helps um, readers to, to find out what is really the right answer, what, which one should I read, which one can I skip. And the reason why Stack Overflow is so successful um, for us as XPages developers or community is because there are so many great people in the community who answer these questions within minutes. Um, I just checked recently, we have an answer rate of 90%. Um, and you know, most of these questions are answered on that same day. So, so really, I encourage you to use this. Um, and, and again, the reason why it's so successful is because we have all these people who do this work, and here are the, the, the key, uh, the top contributor um, that, that are also listed on Stack Overflow. And they do that so that they get their reputation points, et cetera. So um, I think that was pretty much everything I wanted to cover here. Oh, maybe one more thing. Um, there's also some demonstrations on XPages Info, and you can run a couple of applications from OpenNTF live without having to install anything. Um, for example, this is actually an application that I will demonstrate in a couple of minutes. My webgate was the winner of the last contest. Um, and also, this was the other winner. Um, and you can run these directly from the website. You can play around with them. You can log in with your OpenNTF username and, and try all these things. Um, and then the very last thing, um, there's also a tab for resources. and. Um, um, you know, because of the resolution here, because that, that resolution is so um, unusually small, the, um, the style is, is broken here. Um, but anyway, um, so there's you know, all these different resources, and the one thing I wanted to mention are here the, the three X pages books. And this is, this is the, the latest one. It's, 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 it's brand new, I think only two or three weeks old. Um, and you, know, you should really um, take a look. It's, it's about the extension library, and, and um, it has been written by XPages developers, you know, people who have used this technology rather than the first two books who have been written by people who developed the XPages runtime. I mean, and th these books are still uh, are great too, but I, I think it's special that this book has been written by people who actually used and have used that technology in the last years um, and really understand what the problems are and so forth. So again, I really encourage you to read it. It's about basically everything that is in the upgrade pack one in 853. 
Um, but there's also um, two or three chapters about things that are not in Upgrade Pack 1, especially the social enabler, JDBC support, and I think another chapter about Java development in general or something. So, really great book. Okay, so let's see, where am I? Uh, I think I covered everything here. Oh, X snippets is actually one more thing I wanted to, to show. Um, um, open NTF, X snippets. So X snippets is another um, yeah, website or service that we introduced, uh, I think at the end of last year. So it's, it's rather new. Um, now, the idea here is to, to allow developers to very easily share code snippets, which are really simple yeah, snippets of code as opposed to full projects with multiple releases, with the defect reports, with feature requests and all of that. It's really the snippet you know, that you can copy and paste into your own code. Um, and then you know, there's some metadata. Um, you, know, you can share this information. You, you can um, comment. You can yeah, comment in Facebook and in this blog. Uh, you can see related tweets and all of these kinds of things. And, and this is something, again, we started like half a year ago. And by now, I think we have almost 200 snippets in there. And the number of downloads is increasing, um, which is good, which is what we wanted. And in order to motivate people to put their own snippets in there, we actually launched another contest, an ongoing contest just for X snippets. Now, every quarter, uh, which means that in, uh, in nine days from now, um, the, first, uh, the first contest will be done here or will, will end. And every quarter, we will have four winners um, who, you know, each one gets $100. Um, it's not, you know, as much as for the real contests, but this is an ongoing thing. This is, you know, how we want to motivate people to, to put their X snippets in there. Um, so, um, again, I encourage you to, to, um, to contribute your own snippets. Really easy to do that. Okay, so that's that. Info, Stack Overflow, import tool. So now I want to start with the demos. Okay, so 40 minutes left for, 24, uh, for 20, 22 demonstrations. Now the first one is, um, is a new feature on OpenNTF um, that I call the import tool. Um, so as of now, we have more than 100 controls in our catalogs, which is the place where we put all the cleared code and all the code that other developers have verified that it runs, that it's documented and so forth. So in other words, those are basically the high quality controls. And you know, again, we have a list of these 100 controls or so. And very soon, I will um, publish a new version of um, an import tool that allows you to import these controls from OpenNTF directly in Domino Designer. So I want to show you how this works. Um, and there's already a version out there on, on, on OpenNTF, but there will be um, a new one with some fixes and some extensions. Um, so when I now click, uh, right-click here, there's a new men, uh, menu entry for, to import a reusable control from OpenNTF. So when I click that, I get this dialog. And now only the Apache catalog shows up because at, as of now we have only have 10 entries in there, but next week I want to add many more. I just haven't had the time to do that. Um, so, so here you can browse through these different controls, read um, the um, document, well, a short um, description, and then you can select the one you want. Now, um, there's a couple of options now. First of all, you need to define in which Domino application do you want to import it. And then there's um, options like create a log file, um, overwrite existing files if the design elements already exist in your current application. And the new feature here that we will only expose next or publish next week is import unit tests. Because the um, developers who implemented these controls can say this design element or this list of design elements is part of the key control and this list of design elements is just for unit testing or a sample, a demo. Right? So for example, typically a custom control would be the core control and the X page would be you know, a sample or a unit test. And because people who want to consume this you know, often don't want the unit test, but only the core control, which is, you can select, you know, which is why you have this new checkbox here. So now when I say finish, it says, yeah, importing work will be processed in the back end, and I get a not notification when it's done. So I hope that it, it works now, or it's fast enough because of my bad network here. Come on still doing something here, as you can see. And I, so what, what's happening in the background now is that um, the Domino Designer contacts OpenNTF. It reads the zip file of the release of that control. It puts the zip file in a temporary directory. 
um, it extracts the zip file and it imports the design elements that were marked as, as being the design elements needed for the, um, for the core control. So now I get this message here, import completed, and when I now go into um, this application here or this database, I can see a new X page and a new custom control, and now I can just simply you know, open this unit test here because I clicked um, import unit test, and this should bring up now um, that application I need to log in. I haven't done yet. And I hope that's the right password. So that, that was the first application, and uh, I don't know whether it, why does it take that long? So there it is, right? So again, so what I just did is use this new tool to import a control from OpenNTF without having to go to the website, to the web wire or web browser. Just do it from designer, import the control, use it in your own um, um, application. And this one is an example for a tweet control that shows the tweets, in this case from Frank actually, sitting right there, um, about OpenNTF. Okay, so uh, that was number one. Now what I wanna do is I wanna show um, a project that is available on OpenNTF, but not all the um, features yet that I'm gonna demo. I'm planning to do that like next week or the week after. Um, it's a project called X Pages for Connections. And what I'm trying to do here is to show developers how they can use X Pages to extend IBM connections. Because X Pages is a world-class rapid application development platform. Many people have the skills to implement X Pages. Many customers have the infrastructure to run X Pages and Nodes databases. And I want to bring together here the best of both worlds. You know, X Pages again as a rapid application development platform. IBM Connections as a world-class set of of social applications. Um, so what I've done here is I've I've extended a community. So these are my public communities and I created this one called IBM Connections Development. So I can open this here and um, it's, it's very simple. There isn't much in there. Um, there's essentially only these two widgets. It's, you know, the first one is the block widget which comes out of the box with connections. So nothing magic here. But what you see here at the bottom is a widget that um, displays news from external sites or some links. And everything that you see here within that rectangle is actually an X page. Now, as you can see or as you cannot see, the UI looks pretty, um, pretty much alike, right? And you have the same capabilities here, like you know, opening the business card and so forth. And you could even you know, use these um, controls here if you wanted in your X page. Now, the other nice thing is, which is you know, obviously expected from end users and kind of obvious, when you resize the browser window, Right, you also want to resize here the size of that widget. Now, why do I mention that? Well, because you know, technically what's going on here is that this is an eye widget. And whenever you change the size of your browser window, you also need to change the size of the iframe. And that's why um, the iframe in the eye widget. And, and that's why I implemented some code. And that code, again, um, I, I plan to publish soon on OpenNTF. Okay, so now the other thing um, that I've done here is I can now click on news um, here in the left navigator and what that does is it opens this entry here in the so-called full page mode, right? And again, the size is correct. Um, and let me open it. Let me open the browser in full page mode or uh, full screen mode. Now, there's a couple of things. So again, this is a list of just, you know, links, URLs. And I'm currently logged in as Glenn Cloud. And Glenn is a connections user, which is why he has the option to add these bookmarks to his IBM connections bookmarks. And I want to show you how this works. So when I go to um, apps and then I say open link in new tab, I can see that um, Glenn at this point doesn't have any bookmarks. Now when I go back and click on this bookmarks, IBM uh, bookmarks um, um, icon here, and then I go back and do a refresh, um, I see this new um, bookmark um, in connections. Now, what happened technically? Technically, the X page used the connections REST API to create this bookmark. And as you could see, or again, as you couldn't see, the user didn't have to authenticate again because we're using single sign-on via the LTPA token, even in the backend, even when doing these backend um, REST API calls. Okay, so that's why for an end user, this was completely transparent, right? An end user didn't see any X page or domino here, as you could see, but it was a domino, it is an X page. 
So then the last demo, or part of this demo, um, <clears throat> is another ability. Now, again, I'm, I'm still logged in as Glenn Cloud, but Glenn Cloud cannot create new entries here, okay? Because Glenn Cloud is actually not a member of that community. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm, I'm logging in as another user, as Frank Adams, who is the moderator of that community. Okay, so now, again, I open that same um, um, community, and when I go under members, actually, yeah, when I go under members, I can now say add member, uh, and then Glenn Cloud, there he is, and I say save, and Glenn has now been added to the community, as you would expect, where is he? Here it is. Um, but the interesting thing now is that he was also added to the notes ACL of the database that reads the data of, of the, the X page that reads the data from notes database. And in order to, to prove that, I'm, I need to log out again. Um, and I log in back again as uh, Glenn Cloud. Okay, and now when uh, Glenn goes, opens that same community, um, and goes to news, full page mode, he can actually see a new button to create a new entry, right? And when he clicks it, he can actually create something here. So I can say test, 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 and then, oops, where's this post button, post, and, and come on. Has it done it? Is it maybe just a refresh problem? Where is my news here? And it didn't work. Anyway, so <laughs> you've got to trust me that it usually works. I have no idea what's going on. One more time. Anyway, I skipped that part. You can watch my video in which it does work. So, okay, good. So that was uh, demo number two. Now I want to, um, oh, actually, I didn't have to close the browser because the next um, demo I want to do here is um, the winner of the last um, contest, okay? So when I, uh, actually I don't think this works. Oh, so this is actually another um, contribution of the contest. This is called um, auto -log -in, um, aut automatic logins. Um, so this is just a custom domino login form, but there's one new feature, which is this remember me for two days checkbox. And this is really nice, right, because in other words, it means that if you as an end user goes in, uh, go, go in there, um, you know, you then have to log in even if you close the, the browser. And this is particular, particularly valuable if you um, are a mobile user because it's really hard to type in the password over and over again. And this um, mechanism here caches um, the password and by using the LTPA token. Now, I want to log in here as Frank Adam, oh, actually. Let me open this other one, because then it's easier to log in. Ah, uh, where is it? So in order to show the next application, I need to log in, and uh, it's easier to log in here via communities because my browser cached this. So again, I log in as Frank Adams, and now I go back and open the notes application. Here it is. So, and this, um, th this application is called My Webgate Social Software. And, you know, it, it's, it's basically an infrastructure to build social applications, an infrastructure with the type of components that you would expect from social software. There is a directory. In other words, there's a way for end users to define their user profiles. Um, there's a way to, um, to have friends so that you can follow their news. Um, there's a way to invite friends as well as external friends. And there is a news stream, which is really the, the key of, of this application here at this point. And this is the news um, stream from Frank Adams, as which I'm logged in right now. Um, so here I can say, um, share something, test, and then I can choose who, to, um, who I want to share it with, public, friends and their friends, or just friends. And then I can say post. Now, a really cool feature that I came on, cannot demonstrate here because I run locally on my... Um, um, on my image, which doesn't have an internet connection. I just wanted to demonstrate here a really nice feature. Um, 
which you can see right here. So this is a video that I created earlier, and now I type in a URL. And as you know this functionality from Facebook or Google+, it detects that it is a URL, and it actually you know, um, finds all the thumbnails or all the Im images from that web page. Um, and then you can um, you know, choose the one you want and say post, and it shows up on your stream. So and the only reason I cannot demonstrate it here live is because my image that I'm running here with connections doesn't have that ability. Or it doesn't have the ability to, to go out and uh, to, to access the internet. Um, so then some other features here. Um, now, before you can use um, this application, you need to do some, there's some administration and configuration that needs to be done. Now, Frank Adams is an end user here in this case, but at the same time, he's also an administrator of this community. Um, so that's why you can see here this administration tab. And the first thing you really need to do is to say um, synchronize directory. Now, what happens is that um, my webgate comes with its own directory where it can store additional information, profile information, like if you want to have a specific uh, an additional um, you know, attribute um, on your user profiles, you can use the webgate directory without having to touch the domino directory. And in order to make that work, you still need to bind the two um, directories, the domino directory and the my webgate directory. And there's a tool that allows you to do that. Um, and I won't go through all of the details now, but there's a tool that actually synchronizes in, in these directions and makes sure the users you know, match and so forth. Now, um, in addition to, to that, as I said, there um, is a way to define um, user profiles. And here I've already created a user profile for Frank Adams. I defined some of these skills here. Um, and I can add new skills, languages, countries involved, personal information, professional experience, and all the kinds of things that you would expect. And there's also um, a list of all my friends. Now, the way I can invite uh, friends um, is in, um, in, in two different ways. There are two different ways. I can either go through the directory, which contains all the people in my, in my organization, in my company, and then I can simply say, add as friend. Now, once I've done that, I can see here the status of my friend requests, right? And then this other person gets a notification. In this case, it would, you know, this notification and tab here would um, show up as red with one, as you know it from Facebook and from, you know, basically all these other social sites. And the reason why I don't show that now is because I would have to switch to another user and so forth, and it would just take too long. But um, it, it's really nice. Um, so that's how you invite people from your own organization. Um, but in addition to that, you can also invite external people. And that's really interesting because now you can simply define an email address, first name, last name, invitation text. And what happens is that that person gets an email with a link. And when that user opens that link, he can you know, fill out some additional information. In other words, he can register. And then he's added to the Domino directory as another user and can fully participate here in, the, in this application. So really nice way to invite customers, partners, or whoever who's external to your organization. So I think those were kind of the key features of my web gate, unless I forgot something. I think that's, that's it for now. OK, next application. <clears throat> so now I need to look. So we handled this and this. The next one is the second winner of the contest. It's called Responsive Design. Now, responsive. No, actually, responsive website. And it uses a technology or pattern that is called responsive design. So let's see. My server should be up, hopefully. Yep. Come on. What else? I can try this in the meantime. There it is. OK, so, so what you see here is a typical website um, with a banner at the top and then a left column. Um, the main column, middle column, and the right column. Now, um, what this application does is it, it can adapt automatically to the real estate. So when I minimize the browser window here, you can see that the columns disappeared. And actually, if I were able to expand it even more, you could also see that the images would be in, um, enlarged. Um, and that's really nice because now you can you know, run that same application Oh, here, here you could see it, right? So here's the image bigger, and now it gets smaller. And, and, and the, the nice thing is that you can implement now an application once, 
and, and run it on all of these different um, devices with different real estates, so on your iPhone or smartphone in general, on your tablet, um, as well as in web browsers. So really nice application, and I think the reason why it won was primarily because it uses this pattern rather than the actual functionality, which is a simple website where you can create entries like a blog, you can comment on things, you can like things, and you, you know, respond, and, and so forth. But I think, again, the, the, the main reason why it won was just simply because um, yeah, it uses this responsive design. Next application, this is actually one of my favorites, and the real estate is really terrible here. Um, this application is called Very Short, um, and it's, it's you know, a couple of things in one application. It's an URL shortener, and it's a central bookmarks repository. Now, um, what I can do here is I can say um, options, show bookmarks, okay? And then there is a bookmarklet that I can install. How do I do that? I drag this, this link and drop it here onto my bookmarks bar, and then I have this link. Now, this is not a usual link. As you can see, it's not an HTTP link, but it's a JavaScript code, which will invoke my application. So let me um, demonstrate this. I go back to, let's say, X pages info, and um, pick one of the sites. Come on. What's faster, Stack Overflow? Um, Show me some web page, doesn't matter which one. Well, actually, let me, dem <laughs> let me bookmark this one then. Um, so now when I click on this uh, link here, the bookmarklet, it brings up a dialog of the application. And right here, there's, you can see some indication that there is um, something going on. It, it's fetching website information, which is um, you know, things like the title and description. Um, and the title is then put automatically um, in the bookmarks application so that you can find it later. And it also fetches other um, metadata so that you can do a full text search later. And this takes forever as well. Um, but let's say testing and let's say um, X pages. And uh, oh, it's still fetching. It doesn't allow me to save as long as, as it's fetching. What about these here? It's so slow. Come on. Uh, I'm thinking whether I should use the, the wired cable, but I don't know what will happen then. Okay, so let, let me now open here the wind, the Wind, um, videos tab, because I think I bookmarked the other ones already. So actually, while we're waiting for that, um, I can describe the application. The application has a couple of different links, like um, most recent, uh, most popular, most rated. And what's interesting here um, that, so first of all, it adds all the things that I add here the, the bookmark, uh, via the bookmarklet. And then I can see both ratings as well as the hits to give me an idea of what of these bookmarks, um, which of these bookmarks is, are popular. And it just doesn't work here. It's just too bad. You know what, I, I will try the, in, the wire. Because I really want to show this application. So let's see what happens. So while we're waiting for a new IP address, uh, let me continue with the next demonstration. And then I go back to that one later. Um, okay, so the next one is Lock Reader. And this is um, another application, but for um, a developer. And there's something going wrong. It's too slow. Oh, there it is. So this is an application for X pages developers, actually, because very often um, you don't have physical access, access to the file system of your Domino server. However, as an XPages developer, you really want access to, this, uh, to, these, to, to the file system because there's a lot of files in there that give you information about you know, whenever there's a problem with an X page. There's different logs and, and INI variables and, and property files and so forth. And it's really a pain trying to get you know, your administrator to give you access or you know, to send you the log files or whatever. So this is an application that you can install very easily. It's just an NSF. 
um, put it on a Domino server, and it works. And then you get access to all of these different logs, right? You can select the ones here. You can see the content directly in line, um, error logs, trace logs, everything. It's, it's really nice. Um, yeah, the error logs, for example, trace logs, what else? The log NSF um, you can display here. The nice uh, feature is that you can filter um, only the messages that come from the HTTP task, because most likely those are the ones that have something to do with your X pages code. Um, and you can also see these other properties, XSP properties, nodes, I and I, and all of these things. So really nice way for X pages developers to get access to all of these different files. So now let's see, can I go back? So now it's a lot faster, good. So let me try it again. Actually, have I videos? Oh, I have this one as well. Which one? Let's use the X pages block. Okay, so now I call the bookmarklet, or click the bookmarklet. Was it still opened? It brings up this dialog again. Testing, and now the um, website information has been fetched so that I can save it, okay? And now it gives me a really short URL that I can copy, uh, copy into my clipboard. I can share, tweet, like, and, and LinkedIn. And then I can say, okay, close. Now, when I close this tab and actually open the short URL, right, I get the, um, it opens the actual website that I bookmarked, but it also gives me this, this additional bookmark bar um, right here. And it has, again, some functionality. It allows me, again, to tweet like a LinkedIn share. And I can rate it right from here. And the interesting thing is that I'm currently not logged in, right? But I still can um, rate it, even as an anonymous user. Now, why is that important? Again, back to the 99% rule that I said earlier, most people are consumers. You know, we want to make it really easy so that they contribute something, even if it's just as simple as clicking a star. Now, the easiest way for them to, to be able to do that is if we allow, that, allow them to do that anonymously because no one from these 99% knows their open NTF password or any other password um, from the top of their head. Okay, so that's why we have um, anonymous rating and it uses things like cookies and IP tracking and so forth um, to see you know, who is um, already rated. And when I um, log in, which I'm gonna do now, and this is my wrong username, Niklas Heidloff, login. Um, password, this password. So login successful. Now I see my username in here, and there's one more feature, which is this star, and, and this allows me to mark it as a personal favorite. Now, when I click it, it will be my personal favorite, but I also see whether other people have already edited it as their personal favorite. Now, when I do this, I click it, and when I go back to the um, application and do a refresh, I see some additional views here in the left column in the navigator because these are the views that show my links and my favorites, right? So these are the things that I just added. So really nice application. Again, two things in, in one application, URL shortener and central bookmarks repository. Next application, only 15 minutes left. Um, what else? The exporter I want to demonstrate because that was one of the two controls that won the last contest contest, um, and it's, it's um, a control that allows me to, why is it that slow? It, it's a control that allows me to, um, um, to export data from Notes database to either PDF or um, Word document or um, Excel spreadsheet um, or HTML. And this is this goes this is very slow, but anyway. So I can select a database here. Uh, let's say I select names NSF. This control, by the way, the select database control is another submission from another contest. Now I can read the views from the database, and I can pick um, one of the views here. Let's say users, and then I can um, click this button here to export as PDF. Now what happens is that the whole view is exported as PDF generically. So the result won't be particularly beautiful, but it will contain all data, which might be good enough if you, for example, want to export something into a spreadsheet. Um, but in addition to that, so while we're waiting here, I want to show you the code real quick. Um, you know, the control is basically a set of Java APIs. So what you do here is to say, create a new view configuration, pass in the database, view name, and so forth, 
and then you just call the um, the method generate HTML from notes view, and, and that's it, right? I mean, it's, it's as easy as that. And there's a really nice documentation, so now the um, generation was actually um, successful and has finished. I can open the PDF, and this is my notes view. Again, not beautiful, but it contains the, the data. Now, if I want to do more than that, if I actually want to format the output, you know, I would do something differently. I, there's a notion of, of templates, you know, which can be um, PDFs or RTFs, and in these templates, you can define your, your fields with names. And then there's another page that I'm going to show you in a second where you can now say, add string data. And right here, you use the um, first name, which is the field name. And then the first name get value is actually a field name in the X page. Okay, so, and that allows you to um, format these things so that they look better. And let me just enter something here, and then I say fill. PDF template, and now it takes this other PDF that I put into my database as a file resource. Um, it, it extracts the data from the X page and puts it again into the PDF, and there it is. And this is not particularly beautiful either, but simply because they didn't put a lot of effort into making the template uh, beautiful, but as you can see, it can contain images, uh, it can be more than one page, it has these, these fields here, and so forth. It, one last thing I wanted to mention is it also there's also an ability to export documents, um, and there's a really nice uh, Java API that describes all of these you know classes and methods. Next one, I need to be a little bit faster here. Um, demo page, which one was that? Oh, the, the, the debug toolbar. Yeah, that's a good one. So that's yeah, that was the second control that won the last contest. Um, it's a tool for developers, and um, now the problem. Well, maybe not a problem. Well, for some people, for some developers, the problem is that you can log information, but then it gets written in you know, some server-side repository, let's say the log NSF or you know, wherever you want to put it. Now, uh, in many cases, cases, it would be easier if you can, could see your logs directly in the web browser. So you know, now it gets even worse here with my real estate because I want to show more. I, want, I need to open another um, web browser. And what I can do now is to say, where is it, messages? And then there is this open in external window link. So now I open my debug bar in an external window. And what you see, so this is my debug toolbar here in the right uh, window. And this is just a sample page, uh, which you know, only adds some um, sample log information. For example, when I click on these buttons here, you will see an update here within five seconds because that's the interval. And I can click some more buttons here because there's different types of messages, error messages and info warnings uh, with different colors. And all of them show up directly here and you as an XPages developer don't have to go back. Now the way you can um, um, create these log entries is by using an API, either in your server-side JavaScript code or in your Java code. And just real quick, the way you do this is simply, this is the add info message box or button, and here is an API somewhere, uh, DB bar, and then the method is called info or warn or error or something. Right? Really easy to use. So that was the second winner of the contest. Okay, what else? Um, image cropper, that's a simple one. Um, image cropper, oh, actually, I don't think. Do I have a picture here somewhere? So image cropper is um, a control that you know from other social sites where you need to define a user profile and uh, you typically upload a picture first and then you select the, um, you know, and, and then you select the part of the picture that you want to be your, you know, your actual profile um, picture. So I can say upload image and uh, now I need to browse to an image. Where is one? Desktop. Come on. There are some. Oh, here. Uh, it's a small, maybe this one here. So then I say attach it. Now this is not a picture, this is just a screenshot. But what I can do now is to say, you know, this is the part of the picture I'm interested in. I can say grayscale, round corners. And then I can say um, crop. And now it basically takes a screenshot of my actual picture, and this is only the subset that I selected, right? And now I can save it and put it in a notes document or do whatever I want with it. Watermark, another simple one. 
just real quick. Um, watermark allows me to basically merge two different images and define which one I want to show up at the top. And, and I can define here this um, transparency. So let's say um, I do this. And then I get the watermark here in the bottom left. Um, and when I change this to 20, um, you know, it's, it's lighter. And I can also change the position here. So let's say top left, then it shows up at the top and so forth. So very easy way to, you know, to have watermarks on your website or on your images. Inline attachment X pages. Now, um, as most of you are Notes users, you probably know that with a Notes Rich Text Editor, you can, um, you know, you can put attachments directly within your rich text and not only at the end or something. And then these icons or symbols show up where you attached an image. Now, what this control does is it extends the CK editor that we use on the, um, uh, for, for, uh, for web applications. Now, this is just some sample document, a notes document, um, saved in MIME format, um, which has rich text, which you can see because this one is red, this text. And then there is um, some attachments in there. Now, um, now, this has been generated or um, created using the CK editor. And when I go in edit mode, you can actually see this. They show up directly here. And I can click on this button to upload my own attachments. And they would show up directly here within or exactly at the position that I choose in my um, rich text on the web. And again, this information is stored as MIME in MIME documents. Now, in order for this functionality to work for existing notes documents, which, which use notes rich text, there's also a migration tool where I can say, this is my original set of documents on my database, you know, and then it converts it into a MIME document. It, it extracts the attachments so that you see all the attachments at the right place when you open them in CK Editor later. And I think um, something along the lines will also happen in a future release of CK Editor, but if you don't want to wait that long, you can use this tool here. And yeah, next one, um, some more controls. These controls um, were from the, I think the second contest. Um, it's a set of controls or Java charts controls. It uses um, another open source project and it's a really easy way to um, display data from notes databases graphically using different types of charts. Um, for some reason it's really slow here. And it happens asynchronously, as you can see, because the X page is already up, and now the images are done and are displayed here. And there are all, you know, I think, eight or nine different types of charts. And uh, here are the bar charts, um, Gantt charts, line charts, and so forth. There's also an ability to export these charts directly here as PDF. And, and again, it's really easy to use these controls. Um, you know, there's custom controls, and you only have to pass in the data and the rest is done automatically. There's also some configuration that allows you to say, you know, I want that size, you know, that orientation, you know, these columns, whatever. So another winner of one of these contests. Um, next one is a rich text editor. And this is not Symfony, this is not MyDocs, this is not anything from IBM. It's an open source project called ZK um, Spreadsheets. And let me open that other one as well. Um, so there's a spreadsheet editor for the web. Come on. And, and this is, there's different versions. This is just the core spreadsheet, nothing else in there. Um, no menus, nothing. And I can say test and I can set these values here and I can read information from it. So in other words, you can put data from notes databases in the spreadsheet and read it out. Um, and in addition to only the core control, there's also this um, yeah, full-featured editor, if you want, um, which has different capabilities here and uh, yeah, you, know, you, you can use to, to do a lot of the functionality that you can use in other spreadsheet editors today. Um, and that, just a quick story, that this has been implemented by a developer um, who works for the company that built this open source ZK spreadsheet editor. Um, and he had never done anything with, with X pages, right? But he was a Java developer. He understood JSF. And, you know, within very little time, I, you know, whether it was a, a month, six weeks or so, 
you know, he implemented this control again from scratch without knowing anything from X pages, Domino, etc. And he wrote a really nice article about it that you can find on Developer Works. Uh, next control, view pick list. Um, so this is a very typical control that, that many of you use in uh, notes applications where you, know, you want to bring up a dialogue so that users can pick something from a database, from a view, you know, one of the columns or multiple columns. And I can do this here now as well. So this is a test page. It brings up my um, a notes view. I can page through the pages here. Um, there's also abilities to do full text search, a quick find. Then I can mark the ones I want. I can define which of these columns I'm interested in, and I can say finish, and the result in this case is written here in this um, text field. And uh, you know, I don't have the time to go through it in more detail now, but it's very, very um, customizable. So this is the control. It's called view pick list. And you know, this is this huge set of custom properties that you can you know, use to modify that behavior, the look and feel, the sizes, et cetera. So really nice control, which was not a winner, but you know, one that I wanted to point out here. Um, next one, which is this MA. Oh, I know what it is. It's mobile administrator, so I really should run this um, in my Safari browser. Actually, I tried here. So you need to imagine that this is now my, whatever, a smartphone um, simulator. And now I can enter my username and password and login. And where's my Domino server? Right here. Because you know, it's, it's a mobile administrator for, yeah, for, for Domino administration. And what I can do here are things like run an agent or run a command. So in the easiest case, I can just say run a command. I pick the server. I say command help. I can choose whether I want to add it to my favorites so that next time I can go in this other menu, which is then easier to, to, to find. And I can say run. And now two things are happening. I get the result right here. And here in the console, you can see that a remote console command was issued. So that's very nice, you know, if you don't have access to your server, but you have your smartphone with you at an administrator and you want to just restart something for, for a customer or so, right? You know, just press three buttons and it's done. Really nice. Okay, the next one is another. Um, oh, actually, I'm running out of time here, so let's see which ones do I want to pick. Um, so I have one more, I would think, say. Uh, there are so many other good ones. Um, so this is one that shows how you can use different multiple threads in an X page for longer lasting operations if you don't want the user interface to be blocked. So this is, and this is just a unit test. It's you know, not an application or anything. But when I say start job, you can see that something is going on. And when you uh, check out the scroll bar, new documents are added here at the bottom while I'm doing that, right? Because there's multiple threads running and it shows the progress. So really nice thing. And these threads can run on behalf of a user. Um, and not only you know, on, on, on system rights or something. And then a really last thing I wanted to show is uh, an application called um, Social Business um, yeah. Toolkit or Social Enabler. And um, this is really what we are working on and what I worked on last year. It's a way to invoke all types of REST APIs. So I talked about um, connections, and connections actually use the social enabler. But there's much more that you can do. You can access, for example, Dropbox files, Lotus Live, Facebook, Twitter, the IBM Social Business Toolkit, the activity streams, and connections, and so forth. And the data in this example that you see here is actually data from Dropbox. And it's data that is not synchronized, not replicated to a Nodes database. It's, it's real access using REST APIs, using the latest standards like for delegated authorization, like OAuth. It's very easy to use. There's convenience APIs to pass JSON, to pass XML. It's very exciting. It's, it's something that you really need to learn at some point because all these new modern applications support REST APIs. And this is really how you access them. So I just wanted to, to mention that real quick. And then just my last two slides. I um, wanted to point out that you can follow OpenNTF if you're interested uh, in many ways. First of all, we are very active on Twitter. We have two Twitter accounts, OpenNTF, um, for everything about OpenNTF, uh, latest projects and so forth. Xpages Info, basically um, retweets or tweets about all the news that are federated on the xpages.info home, um, um, homepage. 
Um, we have our actual sites, xpagesinfo, openndf.org. We have our blog, very active blog with 200 entries last year. Um, we have a YouTube channel um, with almost 100,000 hits by now. We are on Facebook. Actually, Giuseppe is uh, maintaining the Facebook site. Um, and talking about Giuseppe, one thing I forgot. So Giuseppe is actually working on a new user interface. Sorry, I almost forgot. Uh, so this, this could be the new look and feel for OpenNTF, and I, look, I think it looks so much better than the, you know, the old one, the three years old um, you know, yellow version and so forth, uh, because it uses the One UI, uh, which looks much more professional. So this is Giuseppe's work. And last slide, um, please get involved. Please help us. You know, again, in the simplest case, rank projects. Let us know if you use our projects. Um, if you want to do more than that, contact us. You can help in the technical committee. You can help with judging of contests. You can help with so many things. You can become a member as a company. You can be a sponsor for contests. You can do advertisement on OpenNTF. There's many ways you can, can help. You can be part of this. This is a community effort. We want to make this more successful. We want to grow it over the next um, months and years. We have many ideas, and we mostly have not enough people to implement these ideas, so any help is appreciated. That's everything I had for today. I thank you all for your attention, and I hope you enjoy the rest of Domino Point. Thanks. Thank you.